Good morning, Presbyterian Church in Singapore. I send you warm greetings on behalf of the Synod and the Synod Exco. On this Synod Sunday, I'm going to share with you about faithfulness in three areas. First of all, faithfulness in unity and diversity. On this Sunday, we need to be reminded that we are part of a larger body of Christ in Singapore. There are 37 Presbyterian churches with about 21,000 members. It's not easy to maintain unity. It requires hard work and faithfulness on our part. But first of all, unity in sharing our resources, sharing our platforms for ministry. Well, the Lord has given us five schools in which we have many open doors for ministry. Even though these are government aid schools, we have anchor churches helping out ministering to the students and teachers. We thank God for the many activities that are going on each week with chapels, fellowship meetings, BBGB ministries. We thank God that these open doors provide uh, chaplains who are there to minister to these students. We also have the Presbyterian Community Services, which was started in 1974 with Hingtik Centre. Today, they have 27 centres across the island serving more than 4,000 service users, from the youngest infants to the elderly in the community. Presbyterian Community Service believes strongly in integral missions, so their strategy is to establish a close partnership with the local Presbyterian churches in reaching out to the community. Besides the Presbyterian Community Services, we have other Synod committees and task forces. They are made up of people from different diverse churches but serve together in unity to reach the community for Christ. Secondly, we want to be faithful in finishing the Great Commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us in Matthew 28. And He says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. And so we thank God that through the mission outreach of the Presbyterian Church in Singapore, we have been able to uh, start churches in Cambodia, raise up local leaders and establish their synod over the years. We thank God for the work in Nepal where they have provided emergency relief in different forms, medical, dental. We thank God for the work in uh, Wales where a couple, Reverend Charles and Molly, are there ministering to the locals in renewing the church as well as reaching out to many students in the university. And thirdly, we need to be faithful in repentance, in renewal and reform. We need to listen to what Christ is saying to our churches. The Church of Scotland is facing a major crisis because we have seen a decline of membership. That since the 1950s, they have lost 80% of the members and they are predicting an annual decline of 4%. The church is strapped with many financial challenges because they have many old and empty buildings in all the wrong places. Churches are sold or closed every year. And morally, they have lost ground because they have allowed gay ministers to continue to be in the Church of Scotland. So what is Christ saying to us as a church in Singapore? How are we to respond as a church? Do we say, well, this will not happen to us? I suppose the Church of England thought that way in the 1950s. But if you are to listen clearly to Christ's challenge, it is especially true in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. This is quite a sobering, solemn challenge to our church because if I may paraphrase it, basically what Christ is saying is that I know you, but you do not know yourselves. You see, we, we are to assess ourselves as a church. We may think, well, we are doing pretty well. We rank our high, ourselves very high. But what is Christ's assessment of the church? That's something we need to take heed to. So may I wish you as a church to be faithful in these three areas, in unity, diversity, in fulfilling the Great Commission, and also in repentance, reforming and renewing our churches. Amen.